Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and today we are doing my take on a classic, which is smoked shotgun shells. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite recipes, but there's always been a fatal flaw that just takes something amazing and brings it down a couple notches, which is a soggy shotgun shell. Today, I'm gonna to share my secret method and recipe that in my opinion, improves upon this classic and makes it even more enjoyable for the entire family. Let me take you back about an hour and a half ago when this all got started. We started to build our fire and when you rejoin me a little bit later on, we'll be ready to dive in for our taste test. So before we can do anything else, we need a fire. So let's get started by cleaning out our oven. You can use some leftover ash as a coal bed, but I just find that this will fly around and stick to our food. So I like to get as much of that ash out as possible. Dump that out. I like to start my offset and my pizza oven with kiln dried birch wood. This is very easy to ignite. We won't get a lot of dirty smoke. We don't need to add any extra charcoal. This, this will break down very quickly into our coal bed and we'll be ready to transition to our cooking wood. I'll take you fast forward while I add these in. Grab our grow blazer grow gun, fire it up. Install our door and let that come up to temperature. So we're ready to get started. So I like to do things a little bit differently than a couple of the recipes I've seen online on this. So the first thing I like to do is actually pre-cook our protein so we can strain off some of the fat. Anytime that I've done these where you put raw pork, like chorizo, sausage, or even ground beef, and we stuff our cannelloni, it gets way too oily to be able to preserve the integrity of our shotgun shells. So we're gonna remove this. I've got one pound, uh, which is about three links of hot Italian sausage, as well as one pound, another three links of regular Italian sausage. So we get a bit of heat and a little bit of that savory. Let's get these out. So we're gonna remove these from the casings and just get our pork into a fry pan that we're gonna cook up. The other advantage of doing it this way is we can get some smoke on the inside of our shotgun shells. If you stuff everything in there, mix it up with you know cream cheese like we're gonna do today and then wrap it with bacon inside of a shell, you get almost next to no smoke on whatever protein that we're gonna cooking. And this helps impart some wonderful aromas. In part, why I like to do the recipe this way. So we're just gonna cut the casings like this. I'll take you fast forward and then squeeze out all of that wonderful pork goodness into our pan. Okay, I've got all the casings off. Uh, I mentioned fat earlier. The other advantage of doing this and being able to control our fat is I'm gonna reserve uh, the fat that we render out of the sausage and I'm gonna use that to help saute our onions as well as our jalapeno peppers. And then we have some leftover, we can strain that off, but that's also gonna get some great flavor into our vegetables. Let's go check on our fire, see if we're ready to start cooking our sausage. We're gonna cook this as if it was ready to eat. So I'm gonna take this right to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That looks good. I like to move our coals bed to the back now. Add some fresh wood where we've got some nice coals that'll help these combust. From here on out, we'll also be pre-warming the splits, which will give them a little bit of an easier time to make sure they catch and don't put off any bad smoke or anything like that. Place our next few splits up here, away from the fire, and slide in our sausage. Let that cook. Okay, I've got all of our ingredients ready to prep while our sausage is in the oven cooking. Uh, you'll notice I'm not gonna do much in terms of rub. We're gonna get a lot of our flavors from the ingredients. You can't see them in here, but I've got uh, two large size jalapenos that we are going to roast in the fire and then let them steam in this bag so we can peel off the skins and then we're gonna dice those, add those in, some green onions, I've got some pepper as well as uh, this ranch style uh, seasoning mix. So this is basically gonna be our salt, but I just find it adds extra flavor. It goes amazing with something like shotgun shells. Uh, so before the cheese starts to warm up, oh, and I skipped this, uh, but I've got two blocks of room temperature cream cheese. So I have about 170 grams of Monterey jalapeno cheddar cheese, uh, along with some old orange cheddar cheese. I'm gonna do an equal amount. So I'll take a fast forward to get this out of the pack and uh, we will shred that up. And we'll do the same amount of our old cheddar. So that's about a cup of our jalapeno cheese and about a cup of our orange cheddar. Next, I've got uh, a handful, about half a bunch of green onions and we're gonna incorporate both parts, a little bit of our green ends all the way down to the white onion. So I'm just gonna put a fine dice on those. Take a fast forward while we prep those. I'm just gonna collect the loose leaf side of our green onion and save the rest that we're actually gonna saute gently for just a minute in some of that bacon fat that's left over. Uh, why don't we go char our jalapeno peppers so we can get to work on those. And these are also going to go in our pan for a little bit of sauteing 
in some of that rendered out fat from our sausage. Okay, let's take a look at our sausage. We're getting some great color. That's one of the things I love about the pizza oven with the flames rolling over the top is we get some amazing texture and we are already there. So let's get these sausage off, let them rest and we'll break them apart and set them aside until we're ready to start bringing all of our ingredients together. Just using our peppers as a paperweight to keep our paper towel from blowing away. Let's get our sausage off. We're gonna let this cool before breaking it up. So now we've got some delicious pork fat to cook our onions in, but I'm gonna have to strain some of this off. This is why I mentioned again, it's an advantage cooking these ahead of time. If we were just to cook this raw pork, this is all the liquid that would be coming out into our shells and into our dish. And even as someone who loves a nice tasty bite, this is a little bit excessive, if not getting soggy. So let me just strain some of that off and then we can get on our green onions as well as our jalapenos. But before we do that, uh, I haven't charred our jalapenos yet. So let's go back to the oven and uh, we can toss these in. So before we add our next wood splits and the flames start rolling really aggressively again, this is the perfect time just to place our peppers right in front of our coal bed and let those uh, blister a little bit. So that looks perfect. So we've got some char on our jalapenos. Let's just add those to a bag, cover them up so that they blister. And I think we timed it perfectly. Our fire just started to die out. So let's add some of these wood splits that we've had preheating just to make sure that we have a coal bed that we can continue working with a little bit later on. Perfect, and almost instantly you can see those wood splits because they were preheated have combusted and weren't putting off dirty smoke for more than five or 10 seconds. I'm gonna put the door back on, let's go work on our peppers. Okay, I've strained off some of the oil, still have plenty for sauteing up our onions and peppers just for a minute or two before uh, we get them ready to go into our mixture. But after these have sat in a bag for a couple minutes, it should be much easier to remove these skins. So that's our first fire roasted jalapeno ready. Take it fast forward, I'll do the second. So we like to uh, de-vein our peppers. I do these in armadillo eggs, Texas Twinkies, stuffed jalapeno poppers, or shotgun shells like we're doing today, uh, just because we have a family environment. So we've got some kids that want to eat these to people who like things a little bit spicier. So I find it's easiest if you de-seed them. And then uh, for the people that want a little bit more heat, at the end, we glaze them with a little bit of a hot sauce mixed into uh, a barbecue sauce or something like that, or even just the hot sauce on its own to ramp up the heat. And that way uh, you can make it for the entire family and not get confused which ones are which. So I'll take you fast forward while we get the veins and our seeds out of our partially roasted jalapeno peppers here. So all the capsaicin, that burning sensation actually comes from these veins. So I'm, as you notice, I'm taking more time on the veins than I actually am worried about the seeds as that's where the sensation of heat comes from, but those look good. So now let's just finally dice all of our ingredients, transfer it to our pan, and then I'll be ready to meet you back over by the oven. And we can give these a quick little bit of a saute inside of our pork grease for a little extra flavor. Add to our pan and just a minute or so to help soften those up a little further and incorporate some of the flavor from our pan. Let's get these off and get back to making our shotgun shells. All right, let's add in our peppers and onions. Okay, I'm gonna start with one stick of uh, cream cheese that is up to room temperature as our binder. I've got a second one ready if need be, but I just wanna make sure before adding it that the ratios for everything look good. Okay, next we're gonna break up our pepper really finely. This should crumble, but I've just got my knife still out here just in case, make sure everything is nice and small sized pieces so we can mix it completely into our mixture. Okay, now we can mix together all our ingredients, see if we need that extra cream cheese. I also have not yet at this point added any of our salt and pepper. And because we've pre-cooked everything, that's the advantage, another advantage of doing this method, is that there are no raw ingredients in our mixture here. So we can actually taste it to make sure it's exactly where we want. Much more difficult using the raw ingredients, especially if you're using an over the shelf store-bought rub to get the salt content and your other flavors exactly where you want them. Doing things this way gives us a lot more control of dialing things in exactly where we want them to be for our finished product. Let's give our mixture a taste. Definitely can use some salt and pepper. Take a fast forward while I grind up about a cap full of pepper using my pepper cannon. And for measurement, the cap is about two tablespoons. So take a fast forward while I get a tablespoon to two tablespoons of fresh cracked black pepper. 
Perfect, got a little carried away, so I might not add all of the fresh cracked pepper that I got with my pepper cannon. I might use about two thirds of that since I went past my two tablespoon line. And I'm going for about two thirds or two tablespoons uh, out of this package of ranch seasoning, which is going to be our salt ingredients. Mix that up, incorporate all those seasonings. See where we're at? That's perfect. Let's start to work on our pasta shells. Okay, we've got our water up to a boil on the induction top. I'm just gonna add some diamond crystal kosher salt into our water. Season that to the point where it's like the ocean. And I've set out, I'm not sure how much our stuffing uh, two pounds will fill. So I've set out 14 uh, cannelloni shells plus a 15th that I'll test to make sure we get it to the perfect level of doneness. Let's add these into our boiling water and I'm gonna set a timer for three minutes to check on their doneness. Okay, our timer's going off. Let's fish out a noodle, check. I think that is about perfect. We do not want to overcook these because we're going to be wrapping them in bacon and cooking them a little bit longer. But the fact that this is a little pliable and starting to be soft, I think is right on the money. Okay, let's get our filling into our shells. Hopefully I have not overcooked these to the point where everything wants to uh, break. But I like to get something just a little bit smaller than the diameter of our tube and then pack it down in in there. So the system that's working easiest is just to roll this a little bit smaller than the diameter of our pasta shell so that we're able to drop it right down in all the way to the other side. Cap that off, make a bit of a flat bottom and then pack in the rest of our roll. And that's helping get our tubes completely full. Okay, next we're ready to wrap each of our rolls with one piece of regular to thin cut bacon. It will cook better than the thick stuff and we just gently want to overlap like so. Well, it looks like 14 rolls was the perfect amount for our package of bacon. That happened to work out, didn't plan it that way, but I love it when a plan comes together. So we will take it. So these look good. Let's go check on our fire. I feel the heat rolling behind me. So I think we've got nice open flame. Hopefully I uh, will let that die down just, just a little bit. We're nearly there and we can get these on. Slide in our shotgun shells. Install our door and I'm going to adjust the damper to about 20% close just to help slow down the fire and retain some heat. Seen about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, it's about 30 minutes. I did add the last few wood chunks at the 15 minute mark halfway through and I think we are done. Those look amazing. All right, it's the best part. Let's get off one of our shells, cut it open, see how we did for our taste test. Nice and cheesy, gooey, but as I mentioned before, not soggy, not falling apart, which is the advantage that we get, or at least I found, of cooking everything ahead of time. Let's get a bite-sized piece here. Dig in for our taste test. Well, I can't wait any longer. As you can see, it is time for our taste test. Now, a common question that I get, this is just personal preference, but you notice we didn't add any extra rubs or sauces. I didn't go for any rubs, as I mentioned earlier in the seasoning section, because we can control our salt, but also because of the sugar content. So if you're not doing your homemade rub, a lot of the commercial rubs have sugar, and it's something like direct heat in my pizza oven, they tend to burn. The second uh, part of that is also true, which is we didn't sauce and glaze these. Now I mentioned, we have some friends that like them a little hotter, you can absolutely absolutely glaze on your favorite hot sauce and these are going to be amazing but I want to appreciate all those little delicate things that we did in terms of sauteing our jalapenos our onion as well as the flavor and greenness that we've got so I don't want to take anything away and only taste sauce but this is personal preference so if by all means you have a favorite sauce now is the time to glaze them while they're steaming hot and give that just a couple minutes to tack up but thankfully we don't need to wait any longer because our bite is ready let's dive in cheers mm. Do that again. Wow. Well, this might look like a lot, but I promise these are not going to last long. And every time you make them, you're gonna be saying I should have doubled this. And that is for a very good reason because they are absolutely amazing. So in terms of the flavors, there's a couple of things that you'll appreciate. First, as I mentioned earlier, these are not soggy, just drenched in all the fat that would have been there had we cooked them completely from raw. The other advantage of, not the right term here, but parboiling our pasta ahead of time for about two and a half to three minutes is that we are getting a perfectly cooked pasta shell without any dry bits on the outside. Normally you need to rely on the bacon fat 
and wrapping that in order to get the moisture into the pasta shell. And if that doesn't happen, you get a really, really crunchy bite. I'm not getting any of that. This is completely even. I just ate an end piece as well as a middle piece. And it's fantastic. And our flavors, maybe you can tell here, starting to get a little bit of sweat on the brow. For me and the family, I think this is the perfect amount of heat. And these, I can tell, as soon as I take them inside, are not going to last long. But that's it for today. Unfortunately, you got to go take these inside and enjoy them. If you want to hang out and ask questions one-on-one, -on -one, be sure to check out my members-only section where I go live once a month and can interact more on a real-time basis versus these pre-recorded videos. That's it for today, though. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. I was just rushing so I could get to this. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you.